I'm Matt Pichard with REIT.com here in Boca Raton, Florida for REITWISE 2014. Joining me is David Lazarus, Senior Managing Director with East Hill Secured and also runs the Real Estate Investment Group with Wells Fargo. David, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Matt. Now, public non-listed REITs have been in the news a fair amount recently. What lessons can be learned from some of the recent liquidity events we've seen? Well, what we've seen as we've participated with these companies in, uh, in generating liquidity for shareholders um, is that that seems to be that seems to have become the seminal event for shareholders to be able to evaluate the performance of these REITs over time, um, and so there's some of these non-traded's that have been um, in existence right for in some cases more than a decade, um, and then on the other hand we have some that have been in existence for in some cases you know 18 months, two years, you know three years, and created liquidity. Um, because of the nature of the business, um, you understand you're getting a dividend, but and you and and you know that you're getting um, at some point marked to an NAV, um, and actually as we see the new rules come, I think that will become more frequent. But the realization right of your investment is really that liquidity event. So what has happened, I think, is what we say um, at, at Wells has been the litmus test for capital raising has become liquidity events. And if you look now at who's been the most successful at raising capital, um, that also happens to be um, the two companies, frankly, that have delivered the most um, exciting liquidity events, right? And that's uh, American Realty Capital um, and Coal, which are obviously now one company. But between the two of them, they were number one and two of the capital raised. Um, and they're raising between the two of them an overwhelming majority of the total non-traded REIT capital. Now, w with all that activity that's going on, what do you think the non-listed REIT space is going to look like in, say, five years? First of all, it's growing, right? Um, so last year there were about $20 billion raised. Um, that's the best year ever. Um, before that, I think the most was in 2007. Um, the $20 billion from last year was a significant increase from uh, 2012. So, um, and they are now a bit more cycle tested, um, perhaps not fully cycle tested, but a bit more cycle tested. So, my supposition would be that they're here to stay. I think that the, um, the financial industry or the, or the regulatory bodies are spending a lot of time making sure that they're doing the right things for investors. Um, and that will only make the product more acceptable over time. Um, and frankly, it's become for the, um, for the public market, or the traded markets, it's become an incubator, um, either for new public companies, new traded companies, or um, for larger existing traded companies to purchase large groups of assets that have been aggregated in a different format with a different shareholder base who has different objectives. Um, so my, to answer your question very directly, I think it will be a bigger industry five years from now. And lastly, if we can shift to the to the, the public publicly traded REIT sector, what do you think is going to be the, the signature capital raising story for the rest of this year? We have a lot of IPOs out there that are in some form of gestation. Um, if you look back last year, um, I would say to you the biggest signature capital raises um, were the large IPOs we saw. Um, so the three mega IPOs from last year were Bricksmore, American Homes for Rent, and uh, Empire State Realty Trust. Um, I think there are others of size that are considering IPOs. Um, we have less visibility on the pipeline as an industry these days because of the way the Jobs Act allows companies to file confidentially. Um, we, we, being who we are, have the benefit of probably a little bit more visibility on that. Um, and so I do think there are some major companies that are um, looking at raising capital. And look, the other thing that we're seeing is these spinoffs in the public space are creating new companies that have distinct capital needs from the companies they've spun from. Um, and I think those create some exciting opportunities to position different companies and raise capital in the market. David, thanks so much for your insights. Thank you, Matt. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.